Okay. So we record these and I'll post them so we can go back and watch them later. Um, so I just started, so I've missed everything up <laughs> before this. So I'm sorry. Um, um, somebody remind me if I next time if I hadn't done that. Aaron Shelton, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, touch Aaron Shelton, Lord God. Let him hold his sobriety, Lord God, till the day he dies. Bless his fiance, his family, Lord God. Let him continue to serve in the house where there's no greater joy. When we die, God won't care how much money we made, how many children we had. He will care what we did for him. Did we raise those children to serve him? What we did to save others. Let Aaron continue to give people rides to the church and continue to serve. It is not good enough just to go if we don't serve. Going is sucking in for us, which is good. But we should also be pouring out to others the greatest commandments in Matthew 28 and Mark 16, level of discipleship. So Lord God, let that be who Aaron Shelton is. Put angels around him, Lord God. Remove any taste or desire for narcotics or drugs or alcohol completely in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I felt the spirit. Amen. I think Aaron's going to be just fine. All right. So Mark, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and okay there we go let me see did this work all right can you guys see my screen here can everybody see my screen uh, yeah, yes yeah okay. we can see it so bible hub this is you guys are getting some insider tips here I, I didn't mean to let the cat out of the bag but you guys are getting some insider uh tips to what uh pastor uses when he studies so bible hub so anytime you think i sound intelligent it's like oh he got that out of the greek and the latin it's not really me i got that off of bible hub <laughs> you just come to uh uh okay. oh yeah let me enable i enabled that lisa i don't know what you requested but i enabled it <laughs> um uh so um yeah if you go to the lexicon it will give you um the the original words and you can begin to kind of dig as deep as you want into you know origins meanings definitions so for those of us that are absolute bible nerds and just want to know everything that the lord said and why and how um, this is just a, such a tremendous tool. Um, okay. So Mark 12, and I want us to start, I want us to start at 18 at the marriage. So if you have your own Bible, hopefully you do Mark 12, um, verse 18. And if you don't, we're going to cheat a little bit because you can read right off the screen. <laughs> one, one thing that this generation is so poorly equipped when it comes to faith in Jesus, I, I, I'm, I, I'm scared for when people die. I'm not scared for the people that are evil and, and murderers and Uvalde killers and I'm not afraid for those people. They know they're away from God. A lot of them are demon possessed. I'm afraid for the people that think they know God and don't. God makes it clear. He says, wide is the road to destruction, narrow, Narrow means narrow. Go ahead and type narrow in the chat. Stay with me. Type narrow in the chat. N-A-R-R-O-W if you don't know how to spell it. Narrow is the road to righteousness. And he says, few find it. Few find it. This, this is, if, if we break down the people that are on the narrow road, it goes like this. The three largest religions on the planet are Abrahamic. That should tell you, if, if nothing else tells you that God exists, if nothing else tells you that there is a Jesus out there, if nothing else tells you that there is a God in heaven that created everything, it should be that the three largest religions on the planet, that everyone that's, that, that worship a God, the majority of people on the planet that worship a God, worships the God of Abraham. A billion people. The majority of the people on the planet, billions upon billions upon billions of people that believe there is a God, 
worships the God of Abraham. That should tell you something instantly about faith, that God exists. You can't get that many people to agree whether they want Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks, but they agree that the God that exists is the God of Abraham. Jews believe the God that exists is the God of Abraham. Islam believes that Allah is the God of Abraham. And Allah just is Islam for God, but that their God is the God of Abraham. Remember Ishmael? Who was his daddy? Right? Abraham. Christians believe that the God that exists in the universe is the God of Abraham. Come on, somebody. Are we connecting dots? The God that exists, the God that created the universe, the skies and the heaven, the, the stuff that, that Michio Kaku and Neil deGrasse Tyson talk about as far as astrophysics was created regardless of what anyone believes about the God of Abraham. So now, and I'll give you a whole uh, dissertation about the three religions and why Christianity is uh, uh, what God has ordained as a way to worship him. He could have he could have ordained any way to worship him. But but we'll, we can discuss that at, a, at another time. So God is God. And he says, listen, why does the road to destruction narrow? Narrow is the way of righteousness. And very few follow the narrow way. Come on, somebody. Mark 10. We were supposed to be in Acts. Hopefully we still get to Acts. But if not, we're going to go where the Lord leads us. 18. Marriage at the resurrection. Oh, this is good. For the marriage people in the room, go ahead and uh, kick your hands back and shout. And uh, right now. All right. 18. Mark 12, 18. Then this, and this is the NIV, and I have one right here as well, but I'll read off the screen. Then the Sadducees who said there is no resurrection, and, and, and if you have a hard time remembering Pharisees from Sadducees, remember the, the Sadducees were sad, you see, because they didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe, they believed when you died, this was it. You'd never get to heaven. You'd never see heaven. That would make me sad, you see. The difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees is the belief in the resurrection that just helped somebody help you remember it. Then the Sadducees, who were Sadducees because they did not believe in the resurrection, came to him with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married and died without leaving any children. The second one married the widow. But he also died leaving no child. You And I'm going to have to get into to why this is important for you to understand it. It was the same with the third. In fact, none of the seven left any children. Last of all, the woman died too at the resurrection. Whose wife will she be since seven were married to her? So where we're trying to get is to uh, 1228. But the problem with people that try to read the Bible is they, they open up to some random place, they point a finger, and they try to read. It's like starting a movie in the middle and thinking you understand it. No, we're trying to get to 28, but we're not going to start at 28. Let's back that thing up to 18, find the context of what Jesus is talking about, where he's coming from. That way, when we get to 28, we understand 28 because we understand what the cake is made of. Let's get, let's get an understanding what the cake is made of, right? He's talking to a bunch of Sadducees, legalistic people that are trying to say, well, listen, man, you're talking about grace and mercy and forgiveness. You're the son of God. Let me ask you a question. And it's about the, the law. And he and they're going to ask him a question about the law. Are you going to have us break the law? Or, or how does this work? Because it was the law. It was Israeli law that if, because land could not go to women. Read your Old Testament. If a man died and he only had daughters, God helped them girls because it doesn't matter if it was a million dollars worth of land. They would not get it. It had to go to boys. It had to go to boys. So it was Israeli law that if a man had a wife and he didn't have a boy, 
and die so that his family line wouldn't lose everything he had worked his life for, all of the house, think about it, you got a house, you got land, then you die and then it goes to the government or something because you don't have anyone inherited. They said, okay, so that you don't lose the stuff from your family, the brother has to go and sleep with the dead brother's wife. So the brother died, doesn't have a son. His brother is now required by law to sleep with his wife to produce a boy. That way that boy could inherit the land on behalf of her and the dead father. Hopefully that I'm not losing. So if, if Bob was married to Susie and Bob had a, bro a brother named Richard, Bob is married to Susie, Bob has assets, Bob dies. Susie could not run the land, even if she was capable. And she probably would have been if she'd been married to Bob any length of time. She would have figured it out. She would have ran it. I owned a business when me and my wife got married. After years of marriage, she figured it out, right? She's a great asset now. She would have been more than capable. But by Israeli law, Susie couldn't run it. So Bob is dead. Susie has no son. Richard would have been forced to sleep with Susie however many times it took to create a boy. That boy wouldn't inherit Richard's names. It would inherit Bob, dead Bob's name and inherit everything on behalf of dead Bob, right? And that was the way they worked around not the women not being able to get stuff. Okay, so now let's, let's stay with me. Now we're back here. We're back here. So he's saying, listen, a man had, you know, married a woman and he died. Uh, he didn't raise up any offspring. He had seven brothers. The first one married her and died without leaving any children. So now you got two dead brothers to the same woman. Okay. And then he says, okay. And then the second brother died without having any children with the woman. The third brother then slept with her and now he's dead. And he says, this happened seven times. So all seven brothers have been with the woman. None of them had children, but all of them married her. So when you get to heaven, Whose wife will she be? And you're thinking all seven brothers married her. None of them had boys to carry heirs. This is an enigma. They're like, oh, Jesus, we got your Holy Ghost tail now. We got you. We got you. What's going on? No disrespect. 24, Jesus replied, are you not in error? Because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. When the dead rise, thank you, Holy Ghost, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. That means when Jesus comes back for all of us that love him, that, that we will not get into heaven. I will love my wife. My wife down here is my sister in Christ. I'm her brother in Christ. She is also my wife. I'm also her husband. But when we get to heaven, when we get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. Y'all remember that old song? Maybe it's just me. I had a Pentecostal church uh, one after the Baptist church. I learned a few extra songs. He's saying, listen, that's going to be your sister in Christ. That'll be your brother in Christ. But there's no marriage. So y'all better get all the marital bliss in down here. <laughs> Uh, read between the lines because there's no marital bliss in heaven. Doesn't exist. So love your wife, love your husband because they're the last one you'll ever have. You won't be getting married in heaven and you won't be married to them in heaven. Jesus said, listen, you are in error, my friend, because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. He said, not only do you not know the word of God, you don't understand the power of God. When the dead rise again, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, didn't marry to some other angel. It says, now about the dead rising. Have you read? Because remember, they are sad, you see. Why? Because they don't believe in the resurrection. Now about the dead rising. Everything in red is Jesus. Have you not read in the book of Moses? In the account of the burning bush, how God said to him, I am the God of what? Come on, somebody. God of who? God of Abraham. Go ahead and type Abraham in the chat. Three biggest uh, religions on earth are Abrahamic religions. People that understand the God of the universe. Say, how did that happen? 
if it wasn't God. If the God of Abraham wasn't God, how do the majority of the people that believe in God on the planet believe that the God of Abraham is the correct God? Is God the one and only? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He's not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are badly mistaken. He said, listen, now about the dead rising, because the Sadducees don't, are Sadducees because they don't believe in the resurrection, you see? He says, listen, God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's not a God of the dead. He's a God of the living. So if you think that when you die, it's over, you are greatly mistaken. When you close your eyes for the last time, you must understand. You got to understand. You really need to understand. Mm. That it's not over. That it's not over. Some of us are going to wake up in a place that's not so comfortable. And there's no way out. You can't burn in hell and go, oh, forgive me. Lord, I didn't know. I'm so, what are you going to tell God that he doesn't know? You know, I, I think a lot of people have the misconception that when they get there, hmm, let, me, let, me, let me let it go. Let me leave it alone. You will wake up wherever you are. And there's no negotiating. He says, I'm the God of the living. You will wake up alive. You'll wake up in the second death, which is being eternal separation from God. One of the teachers of the law came. We, we went through all of that to get to here. Okay. Uh, yes, did I answer that already? Eight, seven, one, twelve. Okay. Oh, yes, Lisa, I got you. She says she typed another number. I'll, I'll add that in there, too. Okay. Um, verse 28. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, Jesus and the Sadducees, the religious leaders, the people that are running the religious sect, and Jesus. The people that technically, when Jesus came, should have been worshiping him and following him, but instead, they saw him as a threat and they're fighting him. So one of the teachers of the law, a lawyer, a lawyer, a religious lawyer, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked, uh, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important. So he noticed that Jesus had given him a good answer. So this lawyer Lawyer, lawyer, literally like the way we think of a lawyer. That's that's what he was. He was a lawyer. Uh, but their religious law was also their law. Like we have don't speed, don't kill, don't break into people's houses. This was the law. Don't kill the Ten Commandments. Don't bear false witness. Don't covet, which is don't steal your neighbor's things. Uh, don't commit adultery. Don't covet your neighbor's wife. So all of their laws came out of the Bible. So a lawyer was literally a lawyer, but he, but the law was biblical law. That's the law of the land. That was their legal law, was the Bible. Lawyer comes up to him and says, hey, man, he really put those Sadducees in their place. So he comes and asks Jesus, he says, Jesus, listen, the most important one, what's the most important? There's commandments. Some say the, the Old Testament has 613 written commandments. Some say, that depending on how you uh, read it, it's over 2,000 written commandments. Some say over 6,000 commandments. But Jesus says, listen, or this God, his lawyer comes up and says, listen, God, Jesus, all these commandments, man, come on, bro. What is the number one? I need you to, isn't that just like people? We're talking to God and, and we're just going, God, I know you said do all this stuff, but can you just go ahead and condense that down to like one thing for me? Go ahead, just condense. I really don't want to read the whole Bible. I don't want to have to go to church every Sunday. Every Sunday, I'd rather watch the game because I, I appreciate basketball and football, football more than I appreciate you dying on the cross, Jesus. I, 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 can you just, li listen, I need the Cliff Notes version, God. I'm important, God, I'm important. Give me the Cliff Notes version. Jesus, God incarnate, incarnate word, the word made flesh, 1 John 14, or John chapter 114, not 1 John, John chapter 114. 
The word made flesh. And he said, listen, Jesus is so humble. He, he washes feet. He teaches us how to be humble. If God can be humble, <laughs> we are so much lower than God. We should be uber humble, right? The most important, important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. There's one. The Lord God, the God is one. Love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Number one commandment above everything. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no greater commandment greater than these. Woo, Jesus. Jesus, come on. He says, you want me to ball down those 6,000 commands? You want me to ball down the 10 commandments? You want me to ball it all down? Huh? You, you, you read the Old Testament? You want, me to, you want me to condense down the law of the prophets and the books of, the, of wisdom? Okay, I'm going to ball it down for you. I'm going to ball down Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Exodus, Leviticus. I'm going to ball it all, all of Deuteronomy. I'm going to ball all of Septuagint. I'm going to boil it all down for you right now. Cliff notes, let's go. It's the most important one, Jesus says, Woo. is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. This, this is, this, man, how, how do you mistake that? How do you not, how do you not get the point of life? How do you not get the point of existence? A lot of us are like, what am I here for? He just told you. That should shake us down to the core right there. He just told us what we're here for. He says this. Love, and, and, and notice how he said love God. He said, love the Lord, your God, with all your heart. With all your mind. He says, love the Lord. I had to, to, to meet that. He says this, love the Lord with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your heart. So what is your heart? What did we think we connect the heart with emotions? Thanks. Thanks. You, you Greeks. Right. So when we hear heart, we think of emotions, right? We, we want to love God with all of our emotions. Listen close. You single folk uh, and you married folk, let me save your life. <laughs> let me save your life. He starts off, love him with all your emotions, but he ends off with loving with all your strength. Why is that? Because we should love each other with all of our emotions. Our compassion should make me say, hey, let me love you compassionately. Let me, let me see you on the street hungry and feed you. Let me see you on your way to hell and, and invite you to church. And better yet, let me tell Jesus to you right now, right? Let me love you compassionately with all my heart, all of my emotions. He says with all of our soul. The Bible says that God is what? A spirit and is to be worshipped. Come on, people. What's the answer? Type the answer before I tell you. The Bible says God is a spirit and is to be worshipped in what? Where's my Where's my theologian folk? Where's my theologian folk? Drop the answer in the chat. He says the Lord is a spirit. He is to be worshipped in spirit and in. Come on. Misty got it. Misty wins our prize of the day. Drop some claps in the um, chat for Misty spirit and in truth so he's saying listen love god with all your emotions compassion excitement uh vig every all the emotions you feel love god with them 
Porsche says spirit and in truth. She gets it. Xander says spirit and in truth. Come on, my, my Bible people. Amen. God bless you. Love you guys. Amen. And if you didn't know that, it's all right. Keep coming around to the Bible study. That's, that's why it's here. That way, when you see God, you're prepared to see God and you're not shocked that you didn't make it. Amen. I love you. I talk to you out of love. So when I talk to you, know that I'm talking to you guys out of love because for one, I got to an answer to God. For us, it says that people that teach the word of God, it's harder for us to get into heaven. It's harder. So that means that um, anyone else on the Zoom has a better chance of making it than me. God holds me higher. When you die, if you die and go to hell, because I never told you you need to make God number one, God looks at me and says, well, your member went to hell. How can I let you go to heaven? Because of you, they didn't make it. So the moment I say, I want to represent the Lord on earth, the bar gets higher for me to make it myself. And it should be. I think it should be. People should take this more seriously. You got everybody with a YouTube account trying to tell people about Jesus. Hey, that's good. Spread the gospel. But make sure you're living the gospel, reading the gospel. You're learning the gospel. You're educating people out of the word of God and not out of your opinion. He says, starts off and says, love God with your, all your heart. That, that's a big enough reason for the devil to attack you and shut your AC down and try to get you back to drinking and, and get you fired. That's a big enough reason right there because it's a hardship. The Bible says, come on, get, get your thumbs ready. I'm about to ask another question. Get your thumbs ready again. Get your thumbs ready. The Bible says where your treasure is, your blank will be also. Come on, come on, people. Type it in the chat. Go ahead and drop it in the chat. Well, your treasure is, come on, come on. Missy's on fire with it. Heart. Porsche's on fire with it. Xander's on fire with it. Your heart will be also. Come on, the Bible theologians. Amen. Amen. It's quick with it on the drop. God bless him. God bless him. Mr. and Xander and Porsche in the name of Jesus. Continue to let the word soak in your heart. Hallelujah. I pray a special blessing on your lives. When you have a heart shift, Lisa says heart. Come on, Lisa. Bless her, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's a, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, grab this, y'all. Grab this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When you get married, and if you're single, when you have a baby, you have a heart shift where when you were single or when you didn't have a child, your life was more about what do I need to do for me? Where do I need to work? Where do I need to live? What do I need? It becomes what do I, and which is not wrong. You should be managing your life and managing it properly. But the moment you get married, you have a heart shift right? Emotionally, you have a heart shift. You love that person so much, you'll not eat to give them the last pork chop. They'd be like, baby, you take the last pork chop. No, baby, you take the last pork chop, right? Like, like you have a heart shift because your treasure before might have been in that, that pork chop. Let me, let me eat this. It's delicious. Somebody, you know, before you'd have been like, hey, anybody gonna eat this? Because I'm, I'm gonna try to get it for myself. But then you have a child and you're, you're, you're cutting it up to give it to them. Same situation is just your heart has shifted. Your emotions have shifted, right? You're in love and you give them the last, baby, take the last pork chop. You take it. You've had a hardship because your treasure is no longer in the pork chop or in the pleasure the pork chop would bring you. Your treasure is now in them. Your treasure is in the joy and the, the fulfillment of your child or in the joy and joy the fulfillment of your spouse. So that's why the Bible says where your, where your heart is, your treasure will be there. If your heart is on earthly things, you're going you're gonna to want those so much more. If your heart is on Jesus, you're going to want him so much more. And it changes everything. That's why the devil throws everything at you. I don't want you to give God your heart because it's going to change everything. You're going to start listening to your husband better, man, because God told you to. You're going to start honoring your wife better, sir, because God told you to. And since you love God and treasure him, you want him to be pleased with you. So you're going to start treating other people better. You, the Bible says not to uh, provoke your children. So you're not going to provoke them. You're going to love them and you're going to teach them. 
You're going to show them grace and mercy because God has shown you grace and mercy. You're going to be kinder to the homeless man. You'll be kinder to Mexicans skipping over the border instead of saying, go to my own country. I know we're, we're digging into politics, but guess what? Jesus is above politics. Those aren't immigrants. They're people. And I'm not saying that the Democrats are right. I disagree with them on 90% of everything. They just have one thing right. We shouldn't be putting people in cages. We should be loving them. Even if we're loving them to send them back to their own country, we should be loving them. Because above being Mexicans and above being Americans, we are Christians. But some of us have fallen in love with being American, Puerto Rican, European, Mexican. And if you're not American, you're less than me. If you're not Hispanic, or you're not black, you're not white, you're less than me. If you're not rich, you're not from the San Antonio, you're not from the east side, you're less than me. We're so caught up in, in all of these divisions to try to make ourselves feel important that we forget that above everything, we are gods. But when our treasure shifts, our politics shift. When our treasure shifts, well, we find important shifts. When our treasure shifts, the way we treat each other shifts. Of course, the devil wants to raise hell in your life the moment you decide to make God your treasure. Because God trumps Trump. God trumps Biden. God trumps the school system. God trumps the courthouse. As long as the devil can keep you focused on that next dollar, you'll never pay your tithes and you'll never walk in the blessings. He'll keep you check to check. And you'll happily do it. I can't pay my tithes. I can't pay the light bill. So the light bill is your God. Is your money your God? Woo, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Someone, uh, uh, I was at church and, and we talk about tithes and offerings. because we, You know, I thoroughly believe in tithes and offerings. And I thoroughly believe in everything the Bible says. Um, but the Bible talks about it. And he talks about it where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. And the fastest way to know where somebody's treasure is to know where their checkbook is. If we opened up your bank statement, will we see uh, pizza? Uh, will we see Netflix and Hulu? Devil flicks, cancel Netflix if you're a Christian. If you hadn't heard me talk about it, just cancel it. Trust me. Netflix and TikToks are demonic. Stay off of them. Get away from them. They are. It's not entertainment. It's demonic. And they're slowly programming you to, to align yourself with the demonic and stand in opposition to God. We can't be fringe people. I know at EBC, we're not going to raise up fringe people. We will not be fringe people at EBC. We just won't. We'll, I had a guy come up to me. We're a new church. We're a new ministry. I'm not a new minister. I've been personal ministry for over 20 years, but EBC is a new ministry. And a guy came up when we were, we were maybe two months old, and we were feeding, we fed hundreds of people for Thanksgiving. And we were talking just kind of like we're talking now with, with you guys. And he says, you can't be telling people this stuff. No one's going to come to your church. You can't be telling people, you know, change their lives, repent of their sin, get baptized, make God first, pay tithes. You can't tell people this. Just tell people God loves them. And that God wants to give them millions of dollars and bless them. Just tell people that stuff, even though it's a lie. Just tell them that stuff. You'll pack the place out. And I told him, I would rather preach to the walls into an empty sanctuary than to fluff one piece of the gospel for people. I'm not here to fluff gospel so people can feel good about going to hell. I'm here to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in the only way to heaven. And if you don't like it, you'll learn to like it. You st stick around long enough because you'll begin to, st you, your treasure will shift, people. When God is your treasure, your treasure will shift. You won't treasure the dollar. The, if, if you give the 10%, God will bless the 90 as if it was 180. Start doing it. You'll see it happen in your life. You'll be faithful to say, no, Sunday is God's. I know the game is on. I know this is happening. I know it. But my first love and my treasure is God. Watch him bless you and your family. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Porsche and David put amen. Sanders says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Romans 116. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Come on. Romans 116. It is liberating people. Lisa says, amen. It is liberating. I I I'll tell you this. Mm, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is taking over. We're, we're not going to get to Acts. <laughs> we'll have to save it for uh, Thursday when we're on the um, Facebook Live. Man, the, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to I want to challenge you to sow a seed in EBC for the kids' room. I want to challenge you to pray, to lay your hands on all of your children today and pray over them. I want to challenge you because if you, I'm going to train you up. Stick around because I'm going to train you up on how God works and how God wants us to work, how we walk in favor. And it's not touch three people, get a Cadillac. It's not naming it. That's the most ridiculous. Whoever invented naming and claiming should be smacked in the back of the head. Naming and claiming. That is the biggest load of hogwash. Yes, you should speak faith. Yes, you should walk in faith. Yes, you should see yourself, you know, driving whatever. And, and, and yes, absolutely. Speak it. Write it down. Make it plain. But when we shifted the focus of church from Jesus crucified and serving a life for Jesus, even if it meant our lives were harder, you got to realize the disciples were all murdered. But their treasure was in heaven. So they didn't mind laying down their life for Jesus, for streets of gold, and for a mansion in heaven. When we shifted, there's still some Middle Eastern Christian brothers and sisters that are still dying for the gospel. When in America, we shifted the focus from serving God at all costs to serving us, serving me at all costs. We lost Jesus completely. Completely. Name it and claim it. Ridiculous. So I'm use the power of God to, to what? Get me a new car? Ridiculous. Why don't I not use it to pray for the homeless guy? To, to see my neighbor, he's cheating on his wife and go talk to him and tell him God has a way to make his marriage happier than ever. To see my coworkers on their way to hell and to start praying for them, whether they'll pray with me or not, closing my office door and praying for them. Before I get out of my truck, just saying a prayer that the Holy Ghost comes on my job site. Why don't we use the power of God for that? Name it and claim it. That's ridiculous. Yes, you can name it and claim it. That shouldn't be the focus of your relationship with Jesus. Jesus shouldn't be cosmic Santa Claus. Jesus is God to be served. Yes, he will bless you. Yes, he will favor you. Yes, he will honor you. But don't let the basis of your relationship be, Jesus, what can I get out of here? That there's, I'll leave you with this, and then we'll have Porsche come on and sing, sing us out. One of the most successful campaigns in military history was, I don't know, 70 years ago. And it was, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And it made people patriotic and it changed people's mindsets. Let me stop seeing what I can get out of America. And let me see what I can start putting into America. And you know what happened? America became the, the best country on the planet. Let's stop seeing what we can do for us. We start trusting that God has us. Matthew 6, Matthew uh, 6, 33, seek not the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. Uh, seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. Everything else will be given to you. The job, the money, the peace, the family. Seek God first, everything. He'll give you everything else. If you seek everything else, you won't get it and you won't get God. Horrible trait. God wants to bless you. God wants to take care of you. God wants to see you thrive. 
and you'll you will the moment God becomes the only thing of importance to your life. Because when God is your treasure, you'll treat people right, you'll do great on your job, your family will be blessed, not because you're sitting seeking out to do those things, but because you're seeking to serve God in excellence, everything else will flourish under you. Lisa says, keep both eyes on God, amen. Both eyes. If you're, if you're cross-eyed, get a mirror so you can keep look straight. Keep both eyes on God, amen. Lisa says, amen. All right, Porsche, do you want to sing us out? Man, that was powerful. Man, Mark 12. We'll get to Acts 2 and 3, I guess, next week. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wasn't that good? Go ahead and type amen in the chat. If that was good, type amen. That was real good. That wasn't even a little kind of good. That was crazy kind of good. Go ahead and type amen in the chat. If that just blessed you. I know it blessed me. That's not where um, I thought the Lord was going, but when people started sharing their testimonies and what God was doing uh, in their lives and uh, Man, that was, man, that was good right there. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Can you hear the music? Not really. Uh, let me see if I turn it up. Can you hear that? Uh, yeah, when you turned it up and then it went away. Okay, all right. I'll start it over. You ready for me? Yes, ma'am. Y'all pray for me. I'm sitting down with a baby on my diaphragm. Cram, so we got to. Very close to you move. Such an easy thing for you to do. Your head is moving right now. You will still showing up at the tomb of every other rose. Your voice is calling me out. Right now, I know you're able.
You never lost the battle. You never lost the battle. You never will. You never lost the battle. You never lost the battle. You never lost the battle. Hallelujah. I dropped the link. I love that song. It's by Taryn Wells. It's called Never Lost. Thanks, Porsche. I requested that she sing that just because I love it so much. I dropped the link to it in the chat. Uh, man, that was such a rich, rich Bible study. Um, uh, I think someone dropped the link uh, to be able to show to the kids' room. Uh, dollar sign EBC Faith on Cash App, ebcfaith.com forward slash give um uh, to do it on the website um we way to give an offering pay your tithes whatever you need to do love you guys this was amazing amazing the uh, direction uh, that the lord took us we just got to go with the holy spirit so i love you well god touch everyone that is on father in the name of jesus touch lisa uh david misty shay priscilla xander um everyone that is on uh, I think I said, Missy, let touch everyone, Lord God. Let them be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let this be a message that empowers them and strengthens them to have a deeper, deeper, truer, pure, more beautiful relationship with you. Uh, we love you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Jesus' name. Amen. Does anyone have any final words before we log off? Going twice. Hey, I, I really enjoyed service and um, the, the person I invited, they really enjoyed it too. I just got a message saying that um, that they really enjoyed the service. So uh, thank you. And we'll see you guys the next time it's time to log on. So amen. we appreciate you guys for being here and um, we'll make sure that we send in something before uh, the end of the day just to contribute to um the the moves that you guys are trying to make and just to show our faith in your cause so god bless both of you thank you porsche for that song god bless a uh, little baby ariel <laughs> love you guys and we'll see you next time all right love you guys love you guys all right anybody else go on twice go on once all right love you guys and Thursday, the uh, we're on faith. Tuesdays we're on Zoom. Uh, Thursdays we're on Facebook. Um, I created this little graphic, uh, and I'll have to. I think I text it out. Everybody should have it. Feel free to share that graphic on your Instagram pages. Share it on Facebook. Share it everywhere. Um, let people come and hear the gospel in a deep relationship with God. Love you guys. Tomorrow, if you're near. Where we're working out, 5.30, work out in the word. Um, we should have called it that, work out in the word. Um, uh, work out in the word, Thursday, Facebook, and of course, service on Sunday. Love you guys.
talk to you all soon.